Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be a Midnight Madness game sent to Sniper Monkey at the email address in the description. If you want me to cast your Midnight Madness game, go ahead and send it to him with the subject Midnight Madness and just make sure that it is gold, platinum, or diamond level, okay? He hasn't been getting very many of these, so again, go ahead and send a replay to him. He'll watch it and let me know which ones are the best. And this one, Sniper Monkey said, is very close to an epic game. He said, has a Midnight Madness game ever gotten an epic tag before? Maybe this is going to be the first. So, bottom left, we have a Terran Red player. It is Hyper One. And in the top right of 2000 Atmospheres, it is Barcode, a mysterious. Mysterious and silent blue Terran player. So, haven't had a TVT in a while on the channel, I feel like. Uh, I feel like we did have a Bjorn vs. Maru match a couple months ago. That was a ton of fun. That was great, but uh, as far as other TVTs, not so much. Is he going for... what the what? He's got a barracks at home. <clears throat> he He's just bringing two SCVs directly into the house. What is... what? He's harassing with two SCVs. Okay, so I mean, if you're barcode, all you gotta, yeah, so make a Reaper. So he NG Bay blocks, but then he has an SCV here to protect this one so it doesn't get attacked. What? I don't, Hyper One's doing some crazy Space Age stuff right now, man. He's trying to change the meta right under our noses. Oh my gosh, he's gonna, that SCV, oh, the RNG though. The RNG of where the SCV is when it's building something is always just like a little bit nuts. And then the Reaper comes out, and, uh, yeah, that's that's not happening. So, <coughs> definitely loses one SCV. Is this guy going to chase down the other one? Yeah. He's going to try, <coughs> but see, the delay on this base is pretty continual at this stage of the game. Nice juke here from SCV. Reaper goes the other way, just kind of got lucky with that. And then we're making our own Reaper <coughs> to counter this guy when he arrives. So... Sure, Hyper One, I'm a little confused as to the play here right now, but you know what? I think it's fine. Probably going to lose another SCV, but that should be it. And then Defensive Reaper arrives. KD8 Charge says, you can't go... Oh, he's just going to die? Oh, he just died. Okay, that's fine. I guess maybe he was busy microwing. Cancel it before it dies. Get a refund. Didn't get a refund. That's fine. So expansion on the way from Barcode. No expansion on the way from Hyper One. He has got a factory. He is building commands that are inside of the main base, so yes, he is expanding technically, but kind of also at the same time, not really. <laughs> Starport in production, also from Barcode. So, I don't know, Barcode's not that far behind. In fact, I would say he's technically ahead. Right, he's building on location. He's got a Starport in production already. Hyper 1 doesn't have two barracks. He doesn't have two factories. He's really just on the one base at the moment. Floating about 600 minerals, which is kind of the large problem right now, is floating that much cash is difficult. It's really, really difficult thing to do. So Reaper ends up getting two kills there. There's Widow Mines out from Barcode Player. He made one Widow Mine. He's going to try to use it to defend against, I don't know, in case Marines show up, in case a Reaper shows up. It's kind of cool. Ooh, Liberator on the way from Barcode here too. So I like what we're seeing. Again, early game TVT is one of the more fun early games in all of StarCraft 2 right now. It's just, it seems like every unit is viable. We see Vikings Liberators, Ravens, Marines, Marauders, Cyclones, Tanks, Medivacs, Widow Mines. I mean, it's it's almost name a unit. You'll see it in professional TVT in the first 10 minutes or so. So it's fun. And then it burrow. But you got to actually... Bur okay. See, this is Mindrake Madness. <laughs> Where you kind of just wander a Widow Mine in and uh, let it die before it actually burrows at all. That would have been a great burrow. I mean... There is energy for a scan from Hyper One, so I mean, it wouldn't have won the game or anything, but it would have been pretty cool. Anyway, he needs to upgrade this to an orbital, like, now, though. Leaving this a command center is a cardinal sin. Come on. Oh, he's not doing it. He's not doing it. He knows about orbitals. He made one right here. Oof. All right. Liberators. Uh, tanks in production. But yeah, but then after those first, you know, seven, eight, nine minutes, it turns into a pretty standard, like a marine marauder tank 
medevac kind of a thing with some Viking support, it gets kind of boring after the early stage of interestingness. So TVT is not my favorite mirror matchup just basically because of that. It's probably PVP. Just because PVP is more of a clown fiesta than any of the other mirror matchups at the moment. I mean, Zerg is definitely problematic and totally sucks in a lot of ways for both players. But PvP is just like, I don't know what's going to happen at any given time. And one person who's way ahead can suddenly be way behind for a myriad of reasons. One of those reasons generally being disruptors. Anyway, there's an idle SCV down here. He's hiding. Barco doesn't recognize this, but yeah, he's going into boring tank production. He, ooh, is he going battle cruiser? A second starport and a tech lab indicates to me maybe, maybe battle cruisers. We do see those in TBT sometimes. Sometimes TBT turns into a massive a battle cruiser versus battle cruiser kind of a battle. Dude, I, I mean, you could kill this tank too. That'd be awesome. Although wiping out a bunch of the SCVs is also very good. Okay, well, you're just dead now. Yeah. <laughs> if you set up a circle and 15 Marines are right under it, uh, you're going to die. You can't kill them fast enough. They'll probably kill you before you get a single shot off, is what I'm trying to say. Third base from Hyper One. So despite losing a good number of SCVs there, 10 total, in fact, and there's only down two workers, and his third base is up. And Barcode is got his tanks out. He's got a couple Marines. He's got some Marauders. What he doesn't technically have right now is anything that can really shoot up. Which, I mean, I don't know. Five Marines is a good number of things that can shoot up, but it turns out it's not as good in the long run. Anyway, what are we we're getting? Banshee Cloak? We're not making any Banshees, mind you. We have a couple Starports, but um, they're not they're, they're silent at the moment. Hyper 1's production tab consists of two missile turrets. There we go. He's building some SCVs now. As always, be making those supply depots. Be making those SCVs constantly. Protoss is the same story. Probes and pylons. Zerg is trickier, which is why tr Zerg is a lot harder for lower level players than it is for the pros. But the concept for Zerg is make workers all the time until you need an army to defend yourself from getting murdered. See? Easy. Easy as pie, right? No, it is not. Third base coming up 12 o'clock from Barcode, but he's behind. I mean, Hyper One is sitting here happily at three bases. So again, despite the fact that Hyper One has lost a bunch of workers here and shouldn't be ahead, he is ahead because he took his third base faster and he's been producing SCVs at a more constant rate than Barcode has. Uh, again, not perfect, but better. And that's how you win games is not by being perfect because I don't think anyone's ever played a perfect game of StarCraft in the history of the game. That includes Brood War, especially Brood War. But, yeah, just being better than your opponent at the different aspects of the game. You can be, like, way better than somebody at one aspect and win. But usually on the ladder, they try to match you against people who are generally pretty similar to your level in everything. In macro, in micro, in decision making, things like that. So he's going Banshee, man. This is an interesting choice. Uh, we did see a Banshee hit squad in last week's Brave Noob World, which if you missed that one, you should definitely check it out. I believe that was uh, another game from Get Wrecked Fast. Uh, he went Hyper Flight Rotor Banshee in a PVT, and it was kind of awesome. So this is more of a ninja fourth base from Hyper 1 down this way. He's hoping it doesn't get scouted, and we will cross our fingers with him and hope as well. So yeah, TVT can be a little tiny bit slow at times where everyone just uh, sits back, macros up, because moving out, there's a risk that you're gonna run into 15 siege tanks and everything you have dies. It's a concern that every Terran player has in TVT. Top left base from Hyper One, he's ninjaing the super extreme expansions, which is smart because if your enemy finds this one and kills it, they're probably also not scouting the bottom right at the same time. So it's a 50-50 chance that your other, like, you're gonna lose one of your bases, probably. But even if you lose that one, the odds of losing the other one at the same time are pretty low. So that's the trick here. I don't know where I said, why I said 50 50 chance. There's no 50 50 chance involved there. It's just if one base gets found, the chances of the other one getting found are pretty low. Saturating your gases would be a fantastic idea from Hyper One. Thinking about it, thinking about it, I suppose. But yeah, this is the most Banshees I have perhaps seen produced. In a game, 
in months. Maybe last year was the last time I saw something like that. That's insane, the number of Banshees that are being produced right now. And what can shoot up from Hyper One? He has 36 Marines. Which, honestly, 36 Marines are probably able to kill 6 Banshees pretty darn easily. Especially with Medic Support, especially with Stim Combat Shield, etc. Which, he does have those things. So great. Additional upgrades will not hurt. He's working on plus one attack for his dudes. For his little dudes. And SCV count is up at 70. So he's feeling economically pretty good. Barcode struggling to produce enough workers to saturate his bases, which is always a bad thing. Oh, it's a drop attempt. So he comes in with just a straight up marine drop attempt. Missile turrets are a problem. Oh, full marine. Full marine. Full medevac. Of marines ends up dying inside the medevac. A terrible way to go. You just hear bullets pinging against the outside of the medevac. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, ping, ping. Fires start inside the medevac. This is your captain speaking. We're experiencing some turbulence and then everybody dies. All right, so the Banshees have been revealed. I'm pretty sure Hyper One saw them. The production tab does not indicate that he did necessarily because he's making two more factories and tank. So he's not making anything that can shoot up. Maybe he feels like his anti-air is sufficient to handle these guys. I don't know. He's like, oh, I was hoping there'd be a base to kill here. Nope. There's one over here though, but you're not looking. There are you, are you? Free turret. Rah. Oh, there's Vikings. That's not good. Okay. Well, remember when I was like, how do you handle Banshees? Well, with Marines, it's not bad. Well, the Vikings are a great answer. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I mean, they're doing their best. The stutter step micro on the Banshees is kind of great. Hyper One's not been using his energy, so he has a million scans available on every Banshee dies. Okay. They definitely did not pay for themselves in that situation. Zero percent chance. Zero. So army supply is 102 to 62. Which means Hyper One really should be able to win the game about now. Uh, I'd just come over here and kill this base, honestly. You could probably aim move it with your Marines and Marauders. There's only two tanks over here. An empty bunker and a full bunker. But, I mean... Yeah, this is an A-move scenario on that third base. I wouldn't try getting into this necessarily. It's a little more choky. There are more tanks here, including this high ground one. Dropping in the main would be kind of super cool and super sexy cool. But I don't know. Third base is probably your best bet. Traditionally. Traditionally, you dude, he's making more Banshees, man. He did not learn his lesson. Uh, more medevacs would be awesome, too, for Hyper One. He's got two of them for this giant, massive army. But yeah, generally you want to kill your opponent's newest sources of income. They're further away from the main base. They are often not super, super well defended. And if you kill them, uh, your opponent dies because they need income to survive. So he just dropped a million, okay, 16 Marines on a tank and they killed it. So that was good. He's, okay, low ground tanking it here. He's taking the slowest approach to getting into this main base, but it's working. He killed another tank and a Banshee. Uh, more. Unload more. This is why you need more medevacs. Where are you going? Go this way. Control is hard in mid-rank madness, you guys. It's extremely, extreme. Unload to extremely difficult. But this drop is incredibly damaging right now to Barcode. Like, to the point where I don't know that Barcode has even half a chance of winning this game at all. Hyper One's army just got knocked in half. So that's not great. His production is also basically nothing back home. So that's not good. 3,000 minerals, 900 gas. Spend your money. Also, four battle cruisers just arrived and everybody's dead. Surprise! <laughs> All right. So Hyper One goes from being super ahead to being super down. 141 to 114 supply. 82 to 22 army supply. Hyper One now has enemies inside of his base. This turret is not in range of this battle cruiser. I don't know. My life is a lie right now. Oh, denying upgrades. Denying plus two infantry upgrades is so good. Possibly denying armor. But he's not he's not worried about that right now, which is fine. So Hyper One's main sources of not being dead right now are these bases. Because if he didn't have those, he'd be in trouble. Dude, he doesn't have a turret at this base. 
Okay. All right. Well, this Banty's going to have a field day. The battle cruisers are... Oh, there's a couple of Vikings. Oh, there's kiting. Oh, 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 <laughs> Bait them into missile turrets. Yes. Genius. A battle cruiser dies because he was not paying attention to his surroundings. Oh, this is so good. Mindrake Madness. That is where you start seeing good Viking stuff. However, third base for Hyper 1 is dead. See, this is where Barco thinks he's won the game. Oh, wait. He knows about this. He knows about that top left base, so he doesn't think he's totally won the game yet. Also, he's going to lose his battle cruiser, so that's not good. Jump home. You have a jump available, I think. Jump home. Okay. Going down with your ship, I see. Double expanding. Hyper 1. He's like, I have 4,000 minerals. I should do something about that. So he double expands. Uh, continues not to produce units out of these barracks at all. Nothing. No marines. No marauders. He's making some tanks. Which, fine against enemy tanks, I suppose. But 13 kill Banshee. Not too shabby. <laughs> Hyper 1's expanding. Okay. He's building three command centers at once. This one finished. That one finished. It's a little bit of a tank push. I love this against the top left base. Planetary can't do anything about it. I'm not convinced that Hyper 1 can do anything about it at all. Did he just let he just landed Vikings on top of the tanks and killed them? Vikings do have bonus damage versus mechanical stuff. So not as bad an idea as perhaps you were thinking it was. I suppose. Uh, it's 136 to 112 total supply in favor of a barcode. It's been an amazing back and forth so far in 17 minutes. I'm not going to lie. He's not even sieging his tanks. It's like, it's good. See? And he's repairing. What a boss Hyper 1 is. Absolute boss. I heard that sound. Where's the jump? Up here? Whoa! Barcode has not been messing around. He's, he's got seven battle cruisers. He's making three more of them. And Hyper One is feeling real good about saving this base, and then instantly everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. All right, so top left end base completely gone. He still doesn't know about this corner existing at all. And there are three enemy bases down here now. I didn't know about this either, but he's going to discover it by accident. So Hyper One's playing a game of, if I expand everywhere, then these battle cruisers are not fast enough to kill everything. I don't know if that's accurate. But that's the attempt here from Hyper One. He's got 73 workers. Barcode's expanding as well pretty effectively. Everyone's kicked their macro into super high gear now? I mean, it was pretty slow for the first 10-12 minutes as far as expanding goes. But now suddenly everybody wants to expand everywhere, so Barcode has decided that the way to go is Mass Battle Cruiser. He's getting plus two air weapons, he's getting Yamato, and you know the Battle Cruisers are good in TVT because the pros use them in TVT. Uh, so it's a Viking tank response here from Hyper One. I don't know... Especially when Yamato's on the table, if you have enough battle cruisers to kind of one-shot these Vikings with Yamato, they're suddenly not as effective. Whoa, okay. Well, uh, this is happening. He's back in the main base, causing a lot of havoc and a lot of terror. This siege tank is going to wipe out this whole base by himself, I think. Yamato's almost done! Don't chase him! Make them come to you! Yamato's done! Get him! Oh, there it is. Still a lot of Vikings, you guys. This is still uh, enough to not one-shot a battle cruiser. But this kiting is on. Oh, then he's dragging him over battle. The missile turrets. Oh, because they're targeting the Vikings directly. That's... Oh, that's interesting. And everybody dies. That was fantastic out of Hyper One. Like, holy crap. Great kiting, dude. Battle Cruiser's still back here, but he's dead. 
He doesn't know it, but he is deader than dead. Because, like, eight Vikings are here. Yep. He finito. This tank's got 13 kills. He's gonna die to Vikings, which, again, embarrassing way to die. But at least he took a Viking out. He was outnumbered, like, eight to one. These siege tanks from Hyper One running around, just killing whatever, because your battle cruisers are gone. So you can't do anything about it. La 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 la. That's not even a planetary fortress. You should probably lift it because you can. And then the battle cruisers arrive, and all the tanks die. But hey, I think this orbital command's gonna die. Oh, the repair is good though. The repair is good, and all the tanks are just no. Viking Cloud says, welcome to your doom. Upgrades are plus two air attack for barcode with plus one armor. And it is plus one air attack. Here for the hyper one. Yeah, you still got a kite, buddy. I mean, a moving works sometimes, but... Recommend just kiting constantly here. I'm really surprised Hyper One hasn't expanded here yet. Maybe he felt like that was too obvious a location to be. Anyway, Hyper One spending his cash. Been spending it real good on Vikings mostly. Also, maybe Widow. Oh, yes, Widow Mines. I see you, Widow Mine. I see you, sneakiness. Yeah. So good TVT thus far, I gotta say. Resources lost 24,000 for barcode, 28,000 for Hyper One. Two Ravens in production. Here out of Hyper One. Hey, he's got his own Viking army now, barcode does. Can we actually get this orbital before they all die? Yeah, they got it, look at this. <laughs> Vikings kill orbital command. Not something you see every day. Just casually walking in with Vikings, murdering all your SCVs because they're mechanical. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, we got it. He's going to get the orbital. Oh, he didn't get it. He didn't go for the guaranteed damage. He went for the almost big damage and failed. That happens. We talk about it a lot on this channel. Guaranteed versus non-guaranteed damage. Should have just attacked SCVs, attacked the enemy Vikings as they were surrounding and landing one at a time. And then, actually, they might get this orbital anyway because I don't know that Hyper One is paying attention enough to kill it or repair it. Repair it. Oh, wow, they caught it. <laughs> That's an example of uh, an attack, non guaranteed damage attack, actually not working. Not working out and then working out somehow. Anti-armor missile getting tossed down here, but there are a lot of Vikings from barcode. Angles aren't great here. You can't kite enemy Vikings because they have just as much range as you do. This is actually really nice for Hyper One. Really, really nice there from barcode, I mean. Alright, so we're just... It's turned into a Viking versus Viking scenario here. 24 to 7 Vikings. So Hyper One's not doing great on that count, but I like the Widow Mines. I think they're a fantastic idea. Barcode's income here is okay. He's sitting on about 3,500 minerals and 500 gas. The problem with Viking armies is that they're not particularly super great at just winning the game for you. But, in a case where there's not a planetary, uh, they can absolutely kill your orbital pretty quickly. This is hilarious. Like, the amount, the sheer amount of landed Viking stuff in this game is fantastic. Goodbye, Raven. I don't know what you were trying to do, but you're dead now. Alright, so maybe we just fight? The Widow Mines are trying to get themselves into position. Ooh, I love the Thor idea. Splash damage versus clumped up Vikings is good stuff. Ah, Widow Mine connection. But is it enough? Wow, look at this. Actually, that just whittling down the count. 
Barcode actually has fewer Vikings now. He had a massive lead, and now it is three Vikings left for him. And none of them happen to be right here. So pro tip, you can double pump Vikings. He knows that if there's a reactor. I don't know why he's got two tech labs on those starports, though. You know what would be amazing here is Marine Marauder. <laughs> I just tell it, yeah. If your opponent's going mass Viking, Marine Marauder's incredible. I kind of like this Thor play, too, against the enemy battlecruisers with their single target damage anti-air mode. They're incredible against BCs. They outrange them. They hit them like trucks. This might just be the end of it. Uh, that's a lot of dead SCVs. Down to 38 workers here as Barcode. He really only has mostly this base for income right now. And uh, these Widow Mines wandering up here and killing a couple of those uh, workers would be amazing. Meanwhile, hey, it's a regular old marine attack. Bottom right. So that's fun. Planetary Fortress versus Thor. Got him. But everything's mined out here. Dude, killing these SCVs would be killer. Hyper 1, kill all these SCVs. Worry about this later. Kill- No! <laughs> this is like all of the workers that Barcode has right now. Where is he even going? Your Thors are so sl You think your Thors are going to make it down here to save anything? Do you? Is that what you think? Oh! Medivac, full of dudes dead. Second time today. Rest in peace, dudes. I mean, I'm sure you'd rather go out fighting if you had a choice, which you don't always in war. In fact, you almost never do, I think. All right, so barcode defending is one source of income with two Vikings landed. Remember when I was like regular Marines, not bad here? Not if they're outnumbered in a like one to one or two to one basis, that's not gonna work out. All right, so Hyper One has this game, yeah? He unnecessarily brought everybody home to deal with two medevacs worth of stuff. He allowed these SCVs to live, and now look, they're being sneaky. That's why you don't let SCVs live. They be sneaky if you let them do that. However, killing this base and will be an all-is-forgiven kind of scenario here for Hyper-1. He's still expanding everywhere that he possibly can. He's rebuilding this base. He's actually taken this here 6 o'clock, which is nice. SCVs, rawr, I hate you. I hate your attempt to expand over here, but four command centers at our time are under production. Okay, so last source of income for barcode is toast. He doesn't have enough gas to really make anything else beyond this one battle cruiser and one Viking. Ah, oh, the Thors are doing the single target thing. Oh nope, they went for the splash damage thing because of the Vikings, but when the battle cruisers arrive, it's time for a single target thing. Yeah. Yeah, so we're GG'd here. It's 127 and 97 supply. Uh, a lot of that for barcode is in these BCs that are over here now, and these SCVs that are not dead. Wow, it's a dead BC for sure. And once again, Hyper 1, uh, not doing a pretty, not doing a great job of, like, leaving these tanks behind to just kind of A-move and kill stuff. See, and the battle cruisers are just abusing the fact that they can fly and wander into your main base again. So a bit of some deja vu here for Hyper 1. These battle cruisers are mean. Oh, Interference Matrix gets tossed down on the BCs. And the Vikings are going to town. These BCs are just like, uh, help. Oh, hang on. We want to be as close to the... Oh, come over here. No. The Thors wanted the battle cruisers to come over here, but they didn't want to come over here. They're not stupid. However, dying to super long-range attacks from Vikings is a little bit of a stupid way to go. This kiting is honestly pretty good. Pretty, pretty good out of Hyper-1. All right. So now we send the whole army back to the other side of the map and start killing stuff. Look at this income that has been discovered for Barcode because you had mercy on some SCVs. They took another base, you guys. The reason this one looks weird is because I think Hyper-1 is intending to expand up here, but he's going to have a nasty surprise waiting for him.
Yeah, production tab tells the whole story. Um, oh, that medevac full of guys. That's his third one today. A medevac with dudes in it has been killed. Liberator sets up in perfect range of a missile turret. Dies horribly. Tragic Liberator death there. We don't have vision of the bunker. Now we do. I mean, Barcode has this little token marine army up here, but I don't know. They've got plus one attack, and that's it? Is that really all? They don't have combat shield. They don't have stim. It's basically unupgraded marines versus some pretty well-upgraded mech units. So, yeah. Not happening, friendos. Single target attack on the battlecruiser. The Thors were useful. Thor wants to live. No, the Thor goes down. Tragic. Tragic indeed. But Barcode's down to 39 supply. His production facilities are dying miserably. I don't know why he's not killing the starport that's producing things right now. There we go. And that's your GG. I mean, yeah. Not even a GG. Barco taps out and Hyper 1 is your winner in 31 minutes and 31 seconds. Well, if that wasn't just fun, that was a great Men Drink Madness game. Thank you, Sniper Monkey. I appreciate you screening for me. That was excellent. That was a good Men Drink Madness. And Hyper One did very well at expanding. He's got 59 workers. And 109 SCVs died for Hyper One, and 53 SCVs died for Barcode. Whew. Usually, when it's that lopsided, the person who lost the most SCVs uh, lost the game. But again, just expanding everywhere works sometimes. And most of the time, I feel like at this level. So, six command centers lost versus, let's see, three command centers and a planetary fortress. For Barcode, 27 battlecruisers lost their lives today. Holy smokes, 70 Vikings for Hyper 1. And how many Vikings for Barcode 46? 53,000 resources lost for Barcode 49,900 from Hyper 1. And yeah, an interesting TVT, that is for sure. Huh. So nice job, Hyper 1 expanding. Uh, I give you a few tips here in case you're watching this. Anyway. All right. So that's going to be it for me today. This has been a Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself. The path of the